In CrossFit or any other functional sport, the less rest you take in between movements, the better you will perform. That's all good, but how do you accurately assess resting time in between movements? On a similar note, the more work an athlete can produce within a given time frame, the better he will perform. The same, how do you assess power output of functional movements? We know we can do it on the ergs, for example, but can we also do it during burpees, snatches and toaster bars? Finally, we have a solution for this, and I'm super excited to show you this in the video. With this device, we can accurately assess resting time, moving time and power output during functional movements, for example, as seen during CrossFit workouts and high rocks workouts. It is not on the market yet, but in this video, I will show you a first glimpse on how it works and the software behind it, and how you can use it to better pace your workouts and overall train more efficiently. Ready for it? All right, let's go. Hi everyone, I'm Gomar. I'm a senior scientist at ETH Zurich based in Switzerland. And for the last decade or so, I studied and taught advanced topics in exercise physiology to university students. And in this video, I want to bring some of that knowledge back to you guys. So it all started a couple of months ago with a DM from Maria. Maria Sabioni, she is a PhD candidate at the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm. And she's um, a CrossFit enthusiast, but also a specialist in biomechanics. That's obviously a very interesting combination. And she said, man, we are developing this new device, this new software, where you can accurately assess your resting time in functional movements and also potentially measure even your power output, at least assess your power output during those functional movements such as burpees, toes to bar, snatches and so on. This has been on my mind for a long period of time, like how can we actually transfer the knowledge from the endurance world towards the more functional fitness world? And she said, okay, I want to send you a device and from there we started talking. Um, and what is the device? So the device is a very uh, small uh, commercially available uh, Bluetooth device that has a heart rate uh, monitor, a heart rate sensor, and an IMU, which is an inertial measurement unit. It basically is a tiny device, a very cheap sensor that measures the acceleration and also the angular velocity of movements. So the, the groundbreaking thing is not in the device itself. It's commercially available, for example, by Polar, by Garmin. It is uh, out there, but rather the software and advanced machine learning techniques she uses to interpret the raw data from this device towards functional movements. And that is how What Motions was started. It is an, an early stage startup. Uh, so this device and also the software is not on the market yet. A full disclosure, I am an advisor to this startup and I will give you more information about this later in the video, but we are searching for people who are will be involved in the business side of this startup and also for angel investors. So if you're interested in this and if you're interested in what I'm about to say, please hang until the end of the video where uh, I will give you more information on how to contact us and how we, we see a potential collaboration. So as I said, what motions uses uh, advanced machine learning to interpret your functional movements. So I want to know two things. First, can it measure accurately how much I'm working within a functional movement workout, like every movement, how long am I spending within a round on that movement? Can it assess my brakes, very importantly? And can it also, based on the angular velocity and the speed I am using during the workouts, can, I, can it also assess my power output during such a workout. So let's see, I did a little experiment. First, I did an eight minute all out or at least 90% row and I measured the amount of watts during that row, all right? So the power output during that row, obviously it's displayed on the Concept2 uh, machine. And then I did, I rested a bit and I did a similar eight minute effort at 90% of uh, what, I, what I'm capable of, but with uh, Cindy, adapted Cindy. We all know this, it's an eight minute AMRAP of pull-ups, push-ups and air squats. I did ring rows instead of pull-ups because a pull-up bar uh, was not available, but that doesn't really matter. And what I want to know is the power output during that eight minute work, that eight minute row, would it be the same or would it close to be the same as during, for example, Cindy? Because my effort, my rate of perceived exertion was kind of the same. So I was thinking the power output should be pretty similar, right? So let's, let's dig into the data, let's dig into what this device, 
this little little device can actually bring you and the information you can get out of it that can also help you within the workouts. So first of all, this is the raw data from all the different axes, uh, X axis, Y axis, and the Z axis. Obviously with this, you know nothing. And that is basically what is coming out of what, what this little device spits out. And that's why uh, I think the device itself, it's not very uh, groundbreaking, but rather the software. But because look at this, she sent me uh, these graphs. And here immediately you can see that the green part is the ring rows, then the orange part are the push-ups, and then the longer block of blue part are the air squats. So you see immediately a couple of things already that uh, I always split up the push-ups in eight, seven, all right? And importantly, but it's quite funny, at the end, so at around six and seven, I actually completely missed the air squats. So even though I was thinking I have to do these movements and I'm an advanced crossfitter, I'm doing crossfit for years, I still kind of miscalculated, misrepped, and I missed completely the air squat. So you can immediately see this within the data. So that's already uh, very neat in my opinion. And then you can overlay this, this is just a different way of showing it, with heart rate. So stay with me, it's very clear that the heart rate goes up in, in initially uh, quite steep and then it flattens out at 155, one, uh, 160, which would be just below my threshold pace. I know this from, from before. And you can also see that uh, I always did the ring rows obviously unbroken and then always two sets or even at the end three sets of push-ups because I got fatigued. So this is just purely showing what you can see from uh, the device from the raw data. And then she also was able, or the machine was also able to uh, assess the exact amount of reps I did. So then it gets obviously already a lot more interesting for judging and maybe for online competitions. Uh, just saying, so in the beginning I did very nicely my rounds, 5, 10, 15, 5, 10, 15, and so on and so forth. But then I was kind of zoning out and in, in round four and five, I did seven uh, reps. And then as I said, in round seven, I missed the air squats. So obviously that round was put together and I was obviously messing up there uh, quite uh, dramatically. Then we go on showing a little bit more of, of different graphs that, that you can get out of this and information you can get out of this. And then it gets very interesting because here you see on the orange block or the orange uh, bar, you see the moving time per rep per round. At the beginning, I was moving at 1.4 seconds per rep. Obviously these are all the reps together the uh, ring rows, push-ups, and also the air squats. And this kind of slowed down throughout the rounds, not that much, and it dramatically slowed down at the end because I obviously forgot to do the air squats and I was spending more time in my push-ups, which obviously is a slower movement. So, but obviously this is just an example. You can do this with all different automatically tracked movements. And there you can very nicely see how your moving time is progressing throughout the rounds. Are you getting slower? Are you getting faster? Where are you going uh, slower? For example, on the small movements or on the bigger range of motions and so on. So you can very accurately predict and see what is happening within your workout. I think this graph is the nice just visually to see is where how long I've been moving in which movements so you see here in round one I spent eight seconds on the ring rows I rested or I, I, I transitioned two seconds went to the push-ups you see a larger block a smaller block and also rested a little bit in between and then I spent around 20 to 21 seconds in air squats and this kind of slows down throughout my rounds when the rounds uh, progress this is because I got fatigued mostly in the chest mostly during the push-ups so using the software and also the device to assess your rest time and also your moving time is super useful and certainly when the movements are uh, detected automatically. But if you really want it, you could also do this yourself by filming and also having a stopwatch by hand to understand how much you're breaking and how your round times are progressing. So this is something you potentially could do yourself as well. But what I found very, very interesting about this whole concept uh, and also this what motions ID is it can also assess your power output during functional movements. And this is important because we know from elite athletes where the threshold power lies. You know, maybe if you followed one of our previous uh, videos, then you know that we have assessed in elite athletes threshold power, critical power, endurance capacity, let's say, with elite semifinalists. Uh, athletes, all right? So we know kind of what you have to achieve on a semi-final games level, but this is just on the ERC. 
And it's not because you have a massive power production on the ERG that you can automatically uh, transfer this to functional movements, right? Because we cannot simply measure power output during functional movements. Uh, up until now, because look at this, because now we have the force applied in Newton. We know, for example, how much external load and how much the body weight is of the athlete, as well as we have the velocity of the movement in the different directions of the different axes of a close proximity of the center of gravity, we can actually assess the instant power output within one movement. And if we then know which movement is what, we can assess the instant and also average power output within functional movements. This is much better than, for example, your high school physics a model that is also taught in CrossFit uh, level one course. It's not bad, it's just what we had at that moment, where you assume that you move perfectly up and down, which doesn't really happen, uh, with a certain percentage of your body weight, and then we can also assess or see the change in potential energy, and from that we can also measure the power uh, production, or at least estimate the power production. But we, because we have this little device which is attached at least close to your center of gravity, we can much more accurately estimate your power production. And let me show you how uh, nice this looks in my adapted Cindy workout. So here you can see, again, green would be the ring rows, uh, orange would be the push-ups and blue would be the, the air squats. And you always see at the top the peak power production and then the red line is always the average power production. So within each movement, within each round in watts is this. So that's already super interesting. You again can see that I missed the air squats in the seventh round. Uh, and you can kind of see that I could keep my power production quite even throughout the air squats, even the peak power production, that's logical because that's not a fatiguing movement. But you'll see also in the next graph that it kind of declines during my uh, push-ups. Obviously, when we know the uh, average power production within each movement, we can assess or we can estimate the average power production of our whole workout, of the whole uh, workout. And this is something that is super important because it also takes into account, obviously, the moving time, but also the breaking time where you almost have no power production. For example, here, this is, I would say, a nice overlay of the heart rate as well as a power production of each round throughout time. You see the first round, I can push the hardest. I can have the most power production, which is the yellow bar here. The yellow bar represents the moving power production, and then the gray bar would uh, represent breaking and transition power production. Obviously, you're just walking around or just standing. There's some power production, but uh, very little. And this kind of goes down. It's throughout the rounds. It goes up a little bit in, in round six again, and then dramatically drops off in round seven, also round eight, because as I said, I missed the, the air squats, and the air squats is a big chunk of high power production, and I cannot produce that much power with only my pecs and my triceps. So beautifully, you can see this throughout the workout. This is just one example, but obviously you can do this in other workouts as well. And now the interesting part, what was my average power production during the row, right? So this was a certain amount of watts I could produce within those eight minutes. And what was my average power production during Cindy? Would it be similar? I told you already that the RPE was, was, was almost the same, right? Around seven and a half, eight out of 10. And surprisingly, what was super cool, I think, is that the eight minute row, the average power was a nice 216 watts. So, okay, fine. And then during Cindy, it was 215 watts. So almost exactly the same power output. This shows that at least the estimations coming from these functional movements are accurate and close to indeed what is 90% of my threshold power. Again, this is just one example. We are testing this with other functional movements and other applications uh, for sure. Good, before we go on to the practical applications of this device, and I think there are a few, uh, I want to come back to what I said in the beginning about uh, that we're still searching for someone who wants to occupy him or herself on the business side of things and also potential investors into the project because I think there's a lot of potential and a big market as well in the functional fitness space. This is really something we have been looking for for a very long time. If you're interested in 
participating or at least for an introductory call send me your name credentials and also your motivations to info at whatscience.com i will also put it here and also in the description of this video as i said i think it has a lot of potential and it would be super cool if other people would be involved in this Good, so practical application. I touched already on a few of them during the video. First of all, obviously, it would be your rest time. It can automatically first detect the movements you are doing, pull-ups, push-ups, and so on. You don't have to add it into the app. It just automatically detects it. And it automatically detects your moving time and how much you are resting. So I think that's very useful for understanding your split times. You want to do a negative split and so on throughout different workouts. Then, uh, obviously, the power output. It can estimate power output not only from the round, but also from the different movements you are doing. For example, you can then assess or measure your power curve of different movements and different time domains and see in which movements you are performing well and which movements are you performing uh, worse. I will get to that in the next one. So weakness detection. How it is now, you kind of have to guess. For example, I guess that I'm pretty bad at snatches and burpees. I just fatigue in my uh, lower back and my glutes very fast. I'm quite strong, but I'm not fatigue resistant. That's just my guess. I find uh, I did a lot of workouts and these were always the workouts where I did the worst on, fine. But with this, with this device, you can track 50, 100 different workouts and then you can assess your power output per workout and understand, okay, if there are burpees and snatch is showing up, my average power output is always much lower than, for example, when I would do rowing and wall balls. That's also because of biomechanics, but maybe that's just also because that's my weakness. Or other way around, you are an athlete who are not good at gymnastics and the power output is always lower in gymnastics compared to barbell cycling and so on. So this over time, you can very accurately assess then when you do the workouts at high intensity. And then obviously a smaller also application is uh, reps detections. So correct rep detections. So Andrew Hiller, if you are watching this, this would be a solution to many of the problems, right? It could assess if you are squatting below parallel. It could assess if you're doing your pull-ups the right way and so on and so forth using advanced AI to measure movement detections. So that would be also something I think would be highly interesting. Not the main goal now of the device, but I think going forward, this could be something that would be developed. All right, that was already it from me today. A bit of a longer video where I really wanted to in detail explain what motions and the power of this little device in combination with some good brains and AI uh, technology. If you are interested in potentially joining the team, info at whatscience.com. If you want to train with us and get fit by using science, Check out the training programs we have for various athletes of different skill levels. There is a still a code going on that is only available for a limited of time. Check the link in the description of this video. If you got value out of this video, just give us a quick like and also uh, subscribe. It really means a lot and only takes a couple seconds of your time. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Ciao.